Mohan Bhai Naya sir, he is a chairperson, chairman of uh, Sabri Chemicals and he recently awarded as Mumbai Jwala Man of the Year, a, bit, but a very big award in this industry. So, sir. So, we would like to invite uh, and sir on the stage and we would like to give a gratitude, you know, plan to sir for this wonderful achievement, for his wonderful service. Please, sir. Congratulations, sir. Okay, so sir's birthday was also today and sir got the award, Mumbai Jwala, Man of the Year. Great, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Before we move towards our next session, I don't know you remember or not in my last particular, uh, you know, such kind of training program when I have shared one story. So, आज उसकी बात हो रही तो थोड़ा story भी revised हो जाए। तो let's listen one very inspiring story of one दुखी husband. अब पूछते हैं कि sir husband हमेशा दुखी क्यों होता है वो तो आप सब जानते ही हैं it's a universal truth but anyways so एक दुखी husband था वो एक doctor के पास गया and doctor साहब को बोलता है कि doctor साहब doctor साहब मेरी wife को सुनाई नहीं दे रहा है so doctor साहब तो अंदर से बहुत खुश खुश हो गए ना काश मेरे साथ भी ऐसा होता but he was a doctor तो he cannot express his happiness so then doctor साहब ने बोला कोई बात नहीं आप आइए ना बैठिए तो सही पहले बात करिए क्या इशू हुआ so then doctor जो दुखी husband था उसने बोला कि sir मेरी wife को सुनाई नहीं दे रहा है डॉक्टर ने बोला कोई बात नहीं है आई कैन हेल्प यू मैं डॉक्टर इसलिए बनाऊं सो देन हस्बैंड बोलता है कि सर प्रॉब्लम ये है कि मेरी वाइफ मानने को तैयार नहीं है कि उनको सुनाई नहीं दे रहा डॉक्टर ने बोला कोई दिक्कत नहीं वी हैव अ सॉल्यूशन आप एक काम करिए घर पे जाके चेक करिए कि कितने डिस्टेंस से सुनाई नहीं दे रहा है सो मैं उस हिसाब से आपको मशीन दूंगा उस हिसाब से मैं आपको फ्रिक्वेंसी सेट करके दूंगा आर यू विथ मी इन द स्टोरी तो प्लीज रेज योर हैंड इफ यू आर विथ मी एवरी Okay, fantastic. चलिए, just check कर रहा था। So husband घर पे गया, जो का दरवाजा था, drawing room का दरवाजा खुला, and वो जोर से चिल्लाया, अजी सुनती हो, खाने में क्या बनाया है? कोई जवाब नहीं आया। Husband दरवाजा अच्छे से अंदर खोल के, drawing room के end में गया, फिर से husband ने चिल्लाया, अजी सुनती हो। खाने में क्या बनाया है कोई जवाब नहीं आया तो हस्बैंड ने पूरा घर घूमना शुरू किया बोला कहाँ है ये देखा तो किचन में थे खाना बना रहे थे तो किचन के जस्ट नियर बाय जो डोर होता है वहाँ पे खड़े रखे ये दुखी हस्बैंड ने चिल्लाया अजी सुनती हो खाने में क्या बनाया है और जो उनकी पत्नी है जो रोटी कर रही थी बेलन से उन्होंने बेलन उठाया घूमी और बोलती है ये मैं तीसरी और आखरी बार बोल रही हूँ बैंगन की सब्जी बनाई है। अब कुछ कुछ लोगों को जोक नहीं समझ में आता है मैं समझ सकता हूँ क्योंकि जोक को डिकोड करना बहुत मुश्किल काम है। But in this story, the patient was not a wife, but was a husband। क्योंकि husband को सुनाई नहीं दे रहा था। कहने का मतलब ये है जब हम बदलाव की बात करते हैं, जब हम सेफ्टी की बात करते हैं, एनवायरनमेंट की बात करते हैं, हेल्थ की बात करते हैं, व्हाट वी बिलीव इज हमें सब पता है, व्हाट वी बिलीव इज वी ऑलवेज डू दैट हमें पता है हम क्या कर रहे हैं हम फॉलो कर ही रहे हैं ना, but then when we attend such kind of sessions और जहाँ पे आपको इंडिवि� जिसकी वजह से मुझे लगता है कि जो सर ने बोला कि मैं अपनी कंपनी में जब इतने सालों का एक्सपीरियंस था मुझे वो दिन याद है जब एक्सीडेंट हुए थे और तीन लोगों को इंपैक्ट हुआ था राइट सर सो नो बडी वॉन्ट्स कि उनको वो दिन मिले या वो दिन याद रहे कि जहां पे कुछ ऐसी दुर्घटना हुई थी जो नहीं होनी चाहिए थी एंड फॉर दैट सच काइंड ऑफ सेशन आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड फॉर दैट आप लोगों की तालियां भी उतनी ही इंपॉर्टेंट है, है कि नहीं सो so, मेरी चिंतन भाई से बात हुई He is representing Tara Sansu. He said, sir, as much as you will be, the dinner will be better. Is that right? 
तो उन्होंने कुछ मीटर सेट किया है कि वो शेफ को डायरेक्ट जाता है आपकी तालियों के एनर्जी खाने में टेस्ट लेके आता है सही बात है ब्रिलियंट टेक्नोलॉजी बाय तारा सन्स राइट चलिए लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड फॉर द नेक्स्ट सेगमेंट नेक्स्ट सेगमेंट एक अमेजिंग पैनल डिस्कशन ऑन एच आर एंड ई एच एस पार्टनरिंग ऑन पॉइंट ऑफ कन्वर्जेंस एंड वो लाइक टू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल गिव अ वंडरफुल इंट्रोडक्शन हु इज गोइंग टू मॉडरेट दी फुल यू नो पैनल डिस्कशन एंड हु इज गोइंग टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट सो लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस मिस्टर अशोक जम्बूर जी ही इज अ प्रेजेंटली अ मेंबर एडवाइजरी बॉर्ड ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट सोसाइटी न्यू दिल्ली He was earlier a chief general manager with IOCL, Indian Oil Corporation Limited. During his 37 years of experience, he has been award-winning HR practitioner. And आपको जान के अच्छा लगेगा. He was recently also awarded in 2021 as the HR Excellence Award. ताली हो जाए. By Alma Mater, the Maharaja Sahaji Rao University ने उनको सम्मानित किया था. He was also chosen as the inspiring HR leader. He he is a life member of the Indian Society of Analytical Sciences. so many achievements right so we'd like to invite ashok jambur sir on the stage with a round of applause and with the with the with it's it's our honor that you are here thank you so much sir for being here man man again everyone right thank you so much sir for being here i said just stay for a few minutes and then the mic is yours So, sir, this uh, discussion is about, I think, so, a uh, 50 minutes of discussion. And so, as you are aware that we have a TV here, जहाँ पे हम timer हमने लगाया है, लगाएंगे. And जैसे ही panel discussion start होगा, 50 minutes start हो जाएगा, right? So, what we want is a, a great participation from the participants also, and so a great listening from the participants. And जितने भी यहाँ पे speakers हैं, वो अपनी पूरी expertise है आपके सामने share करने की कोशिश करेंगे through panel discussion, right? So Asuk Jambu sir First of all All set So sir mic aapko diya jaye <laughs> Sir is ready Done. Done. Am I audible? Yes. Great. Let me also have the pleasure of inviting uh, two star speakers, uh, Sri Rishikesh Rawal ji, on stage, and uh, Sri Rajesh Vaidya ji. Please join me. Thank you, Bhavin Bhai, for the warm welcome and the introduction. I think we are running behind schedule, so without uh, much ado, let me straight away dive in. Kim Cho, good. Uh, so let's start by giving uh, a round of applause to our two distinguished uh, speakers for this segment. what i'll do is uh, i'll make uh, a few quick opening remarks before i introduce and invite uh, the distinguished speakers to share their perspective and insights with all of you we have a mixed diverse group who are present here there is ehs there is hr there is operations there is there are ceos there are academic academicians and all so uh, let me start the first factory was reportedly set up sometime in the early 17th century around 1613 or so uh probably a textile producing unit maybe in surat insaan ki basic requirements roti kapda makan roti us zamane mein processed food hota nahi tha so seedha farm to mouth and uh, makan to factory mein banta nahi hai on site banta hai so shayad textile unit tha and aaj tak surat maintains its leadership it took mankind almost 300 years to put the spotlight on the human factor at work after that which was in the form of the hawthorne experiments conducted around 1920 at the hawthorne factory of western electric company near chicago 
until then the focus of management was on the physical and capital assets of the companies and nobody thought that the human factor was important enough to deserve and receive separate attention elton mayo and others studied human response to certain introductions of changes in the workplace including layout lighting ventilation so on and so forth and from 1920 onwards the process of gradual evolution of a body of knowledge commenced and if i am allowed to jump straight to employee health safety and overall well being i would count fencing of dangerous machinery fire fighting facilities providing ppe perhaps setting up and operating effluent treatment plants as some of the bigger and more important building blocks of this important aspect of enterprise management treasure vessels had to be well maintained it also required periodic statutory inspection and if things like that didn't happen we had incidents like the ghastly bhopal gas disaster which we all heard about earlier on that cold winter night of 2nd december 1984 add to it creation of green belt and strict zero discharge guidelines for industrial effluents etc medical benefits for industrial workers in the late 70s and 80s typically ranged from coverage under the esi act and or one month salary as medical benefit grossly inadequate you would say i agree of course privatization of the insurance sector and product innovations have now led to group employee medical claim policies and uh, so on which are now we are all aware of and most of us have coverage under such schemes safety of the at the workplace has also moved from standard sops and fire fighting equipment and mock drill on how to use them and enhance behavior based safety with lnd playing a key role in planning and execution training of employees to be equi equipped with the right attitudes and skills for ensuring safe workplaces about 100 years after the hawthorn experiments it was 2020 and thanks to the pandemic the spotlight was once again on employee health and overall well being the detailed flyer announcing this program makes a mention of this and across the globe it has been recognized and accepted that one of the few positive takeaways of the pandemic apart from accelerating the development of vaccines which were already under development uh, was the fact that human and employee well being including psychological well being or mental well being started receiving greater and the right kind of attention i will stop here and these distinguished gentlemen will take us forward and enlighten us about the strategies the processes the methods and the nuts and bolts of how exactly employee well being is happening in contemporary business organizations and how that critical interface between ehs hr safety department fire fighting department all of that will happen what they will do and do very well is to share not only information but also insights that help in co creating collaborative approaches right mindsets system culture and outcomes uh i'll first start by introducing shri rishikesh rawal ji uh he is president group human resources and corporate communications at zydus group zydus life sciences limited he is an msw from ms university of baroda 1989 batch he also has certifications from iim bangalore and iim kolkata in the earlier years of his career rishikesh ji has worked with the sarabhai group glaxo india pfizer limited in human resource function for their manufacturing verticals he has had an incredible impact in the area of human behavior organization building and cultural transformation in india with leading mncs and large indian business organizations for more than two decades he has immersed himself in the practice of people processes od and change management he has been applauded for his work in the area of change management and facilitation of multiple projects around cultural transformation which we will all be very interested in he has been involved in the design of decisive predictable organizational architecture while preserving result driven distinctiveness of the enterprises his professional journey has been absolutely fantastic and we are all very very privileged to have him with us this afternoon and without wasting any more time i'll request rishikesh rawal to share his insights with all of us ladies and gentlemen round of applause for him and uh, the next 8 minutes or so all yours good evening everyone thank you mr jambur uh, for very kind introduction uh, first of all uh, thank you very much for inviting uh, you know for sharing my thoughts uh, on this platform uh, very happy to see 
HR and uh, EHS uh, professionals together in one conference. And in fact, in my career, first time I'm attending a conference where HR, EHS, and also the director of health and safety department, everyone sitting together and, uh, you know, uh, it's a knowledge uh, sharing platform. I was very fortunate that uh, I would say, you know, I'm blessed that I worked with uh, some of those organizations and also current organization where the health of people is considered as one of the, you know, very important priority for the business. Not for the selfish reason that it is required for the business continuity, but the employer always felt that the care for my people is very, very important and they really meant it by actions. When we look at the today's topic of convergence of HR and EHS, it was always there. Uh, I have been seeing it for last three decades because EHS team and human resource, we all work as a custodian of people and the custodian of assets of the organization. So in fact, the goal is very similar and that is how whether formally or informally, these are two separate departments in the organization structure, but I think we all work together when we go back to the organization. In fact, if you look at the COVID time, 2020, I was just trying to reflect when I had to come for this session, I was trying to reflect the best of collaboration which happened between HR and EHS was from the COVID time. It was the best of the time because I think they both had the responsibility to protect the people from the COVID situation and provide that kind of safe working environment. I remember I think my almost every day during the COVID time, in fact, I had shifted my office to the plant for almost four months. From the corporate office, I moved to the plant. Our morning we used to start with the meeting with the EHS team. Evening we used to close the day with the EHS team. In fact, uh, I think a salute to the EHS professionals who really stood by during this difficult time. And every day, I think, uh, of course, HR team also, that HR and EHS was present at the plants, manufacturing plants every day, even the most difficult time when we had a lockdown. So that is the spirit the professionals have demonstrated. You know, there was a risk of the life your family members were worried that why are you going to the office? Why are you going to the plant in this difficult situation? Your neighbors are sitting at home during the lockdown period and the EHS professionals and the HR people, they were going to the plants or going to their offices. I personally feel that this convergence is very, very important and it will always continue. It will always reinforce. Today, if you look at, there are certain statutory requirements in terms of the governance, ESG, for all the large organizations. Last couple of years, we have started listening about ESG, environment, social, and uh, governance. And E and S, these two aspects, governance is, of course, it is more, you know, handled by the finance department. But E and S, these two aspects of ESG, which is handled by the EHS team and the HR team. S is for social, which is more related to the people practices. And E is more about the environment, which the EHS team handles. And Mr. Saraswat, in fact, spoke, and Bamani Asab also spoke about how relevant it is in today's context, that how do we protect our environment? How do we make the people, the safe practices at the plant? When I prevent the accidents in my manufacturing plants, automatically the productivity goes up. In fact, I'm contributing to the national productivity enhancement when I'm preventing the accidents at the uh, plant. This is our indirect contribution, I would say direct contribution in enhancing the productivity of the nation. It is not about the reputation alone of course, the reputation is always enhanced when there is a zero accident, zero fatality in your plant, zero lost time accident. In fact, I worked for those organizations where the KPI 
of the key managers is zero loss time accidents. And people are rewarded for this, catching people doing the right things. In fact, normally in the organizations we do punish people for doing the wrong things. But I was very fortunate that I had a manager long back in my career who taught me that we must catch doing the people who are, who are doing the right things. So we, and we reinforce that positive actions by catching people doing the right things. Even in the, I have seen many of the EHS managers, they are also very creative. And they have come up with the idea that among the various functions, let us reward those functions or those plants or those manufacturing facilities where we have the best of the safety records, best of the environment records. And you reward them in a public, by the CEO, you reward them at various platforms. I think this is so positive reinforcement of catching people doing the right things. In terms of environment, of course, I think it is all, uh, you know, needless to say, in fact, uh, the previous speakers have already spoken enough on this. But the, I think the need for today is more in terms of environment protection because in the current context, we have seen yesterday what happened, the cyclone. Fortunately, in fact, because the government machinery did a fantastic job of uh, prevention and we had a minimum loss of uh, human lives. But I think this is all the result of uh, the kind of damage which has happened because of what happened past decades in terms of uh, damaging the environment through plastic and uh, various other industrial waste. And I think today I'm very happy when we see a children coming from the school. They have been taught about the environment protection. Many a times the small children, they also teach you that you can't throw the bottle on the road. You can't throw the plastic on the road. We must wait for the dustbin. This is a wonderful thing which I think perhaps when we were young, we were not taught in the school. But today's school, I think in fact, uh, a good kind of civic sense is being taught. Even my children also taught me many a times that we don't throw all this garbage on the road which is a normal phenomena in our India, that you just throw the plastic on the road after consumption. In the organization today, whether it is small or big, everywhere, I think uh, role of HR and EHS is uh, very important in terms of, uh, as a custodian of the discipline in the organization. It is all, as someone talked about the behavioral based safety programs where it is all about behavior and it is just overconfidence many a times which is resulting into an accident. We also, we have seen some accidents in my current organization or the previous organization. It is more about the attitude. Most of the organizations are well-meaning organizations. They have provided the right kind of tools. They have SOPs in place, but the accident happens because of not only because of lack of training, sometimes it is also lack of training, but most of the time, my casual attitude. I want to do, I want to finish my job faster. So I will adopt some shortcuts and which can result into an accident. So I think it's uh, our joint responsibility as an HR and the EHS team that how do we develop this kind of uh, right attitude of safety and the environment protection. It's a joint responsibility. The government machinery is working very hard to provide us all the support. And uh, I have always seen very, very positive support from the government whenever we have asked for in terms of training of our people or helping us with the better systems because they have been seeing multiple companies, multiple industries. So there is always like mine is a pharmaceutical company but there could be a better way of learning from maybe fertilizer companies or the heavy chemicals company or automobile companies. So whenever we have asked for the inputs from the government, uh, from the director of factory inspectorate uh, office, we got a lot of learning from them. So I think it is our duty that we work together and I think improve on the EHS standards. India is definitely now at a very different level in the global uh, phenomena. There is a lot of respect for India. 
I have also seen, you know, whenever in our organizations, any multinational organizations, when they want to have a joint venture with us, with, when they come here for due diligence, before signing the joint, uh, whether giving us the contract manufacturing business or to sign a joint, uh, joint venture, they do a thorough EHS audit. And there is a lot to learn. We have, you know, when uh, we have experienced this due diligence from the multinational organizers, we have a joint venture over 20 years with Pfizer, which is a global uh, pharmaceutical company, leading uh, pharmaceutical company. We also have joint venture with uh, Takeda and Bayer, very long lasting joint ventures. But the kind of uh, detailing what they have on the EHS, in fact, huge learning for us, huge learning. They are at a very, very different level of, when they ask questions about our EHS practices and the SOPs, we learn a lot from them. In fact, we have adopted a lot of good practices from them at our other manufacturing facilities where we don't have these joint ventures, but it was good because our employer, our promoters, they also believe that we must have the adequate uh, EHS uh, measures in place so our people are safe. It is not only for the business continuity reasons because that is must. When we have a safe practices, definitely there is a hidden benefit of business continuity. But uh, I think uh, the care for people has to be felt very genuine by us, by HR, by EHS, everyone. Then only I think what we tell to people that these are my SOPs you have to follow, if we demonstrate the genuine care beyond work, taking it at a personal level also, I think people do take your message very, uh, you know, seriously. So this was uh, some thoughts which I wanted to share. Thank you so much. I'll be part of the discussions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rishikesh ji, for the very eloquent and deeply insightful inputs. A loud round of applause for him. <laughs> Quickly recapitulate a few of his uh, uh, sharings. The employers that he worked with always felt that health of employees was very important. For EHS and HR, there is a common goal. The best collaboration happened during COVID times. I think uh, Mr. Rupak also talked about how crisis brings out the best in human beings or brings about changed behavior. Uh, both HR and EHS are custodians of human lives and uh, one of the last points and a very important point he said is genuine care for people is very important which was talked about earlier as well. Uh, with that we are now ready to invite our next speaker, uh, Rajesh Vaidya, uh, my good friend, is a senior HR leader with over three decades of career in the field of human resources. He has varied experience in terms of industry verticals, HR roles, national and international geographies. His contributions are in the fields of organizational transformation and turnarounds, building high performance, strategic talent, organizational capability building, IR and corporate social responsibility. He has worked with very many reputed employers like Aishar, Godre G, GE, uh, Info Media India, ICICI, Venture Private Limited, Ranbaxi Laboratories, Earth and Stars, SRL, and uh, Silox India Private Limited, formerly known as Transpec Silox Industry Private Limited. His current position is CHRO and Head Sustainability, therefore he has multifunction responsibilities and very relevant responsibilities for today's program uh, at SIPL, uh, which is an Indo-Belgian JV in inorganic chemical sector. He heads HR, CSR and sustainability initiatives in his current role. Under his leadership, SIPL has won prestigious awards like Indian Chemical Council's CSR Excellence Award for the year 2018, Federation of Gujarat Industries FGI 16th HR Excellence Award, among many others. Loud round of applause for Mr. Rajesh Vaidya. Floor is all yours for the next about eight minutes. Thank you, Ashok. And thank you, Rishikesh, for setting the stage wonderfully. So, uh, EHS and HR, vital partnerships. So, EHS and HR, there is a 
interesting imagery because most of my career has been on the shop floor uh, in manufacturing setups. So the imagery is like uh, Tom and Jerry, you know, you know, chasing each other most of the time. Okay. Training hua ki nahi, form bare ki nahi, accident hua, accident ka wo, uh, various forms submit kiye ki nahi. So all those things uh, I think used to happen and uh, I think as Rishikesh said that uh, uh, during COVID came COVID and that uh, sort of calamity brought both the functions uh, together in a very meaningful manner. When uh, we talk about vital partnerships, okay, it is EHS and HR, these two functions, yes. But my experience suggests that uh, there are five important uh, players in this whole subject in the organizational context. So, uh, number one, the top leadership or investors or the promoters, whatever you call, board of directors, who have ultimate control of business governance, okay? And they basically have the absolute responsibility to set the tone, okay? To set the expectation of running business in sustainable manner. And it is not by jargon or sloganering. It's absolutely important that they provide necessary uh, resources in terms of money, in terms of intellectual capital. So this is very clear. The second player is the executive or leadership team. So those who are responsible, the, this typical CXO suit, those who are responsible to run the uh, operations, those who are responsible to deliver uh, business results. So this is the second player. Third is the supply chain or the value chain, which would have operations, which will have uh, uh, material supply, which would have transportation. So the entire value chain where most of the employees of the organization, they would be engaged. So this is the third partner. Fourth is uh, obviously EHS and uh, fifth HR. So when these players, they come together, uh, someone sets the direction, someone sets the tone uh, and provide resources. Someone creates governance structure, governance mechanism. Someone brings knowledge, expertise, training and someone links the outcomes or KPIs to individual performance. Rewards recognition mechanisms are set. Uh, the cultural uh, expectations or cultural transformation is carried through uh, expertise in human behavior, organization development programs, initiatives. Then the magic happens. The question is, why should magic happen? And I think Guru Park has told us that we are already late. It is not a question of uh, uh, whether sustainability is good for business or no. The question is whether do you want to really survive and do you want your next generations okay, to survive and live a meaningful life. So it is absolutely imperative that uh, we all understand the importance, the import, the, the very simplistic understanding of sustainability is basically fulfilling our present needs without compromising on the uh, requirements of future generations. And the way uh, we are exploiting our present uh, resources, uh, I think it has been uh, uh, scary, ghastly. And, and it is incumbent upon every member of the society or corporate citizen who, who to, to play one's uh, role in a very meaningful manner. So how many of you are from EHS? Can just just raise your hand? Okay, wonderful. So almost 50% uh, or a little more than 50% and rest I assume are from HR. How many from HR? Okay, that, that's great, that's great. So uh, the challenge is how do we rise ourselves Okay, from the organizational boundaries. The organizational boundaries are created primarily to, to uh, simplify work, to create some kind of accountabilities. However, if we find that something needs to happen, something must happen, which is not happening, then I think the, the other department who basically feels very passionately, I think those professionals must come forward. 
put forth their points of view and be persistent. This is absolutely uh, essential and in real life, this kind of uh, initiatives are called for. When I said that there are five major partners, it does not give any latitude or leeway. No, 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 no. If you feel passionately, then, then step forward and put across your point. Even if it means putting your neck on the line, so be it. And I know I'm making a big statement, but we are talking about survival, right? So this is absolutely essential. Fortunately, there are many organizations of uh, both MNCs as well as Indian origin who have embarked on the sustainability journey quite nicely. And there are tons of uh, success stories that are available. A lot of literature is available. A lot of case studies are available. And uh, I think we can learn from each other. We can take inspiration from each other. How HR, because I belong to HR fraternity, so to say, so how HR can play uh, a pivotal role in bringing uh, sustainability right in the center stage of the strategy or organizational agenda. Well, we take care of recruitment. We, we onboard people, we hire people, right? If you want to raise the bar of our organizational EHS capabilities, can we map organizations okay, who have a successful track record, who are known to have good EHS culture, and say, okay, let me attract talent from these organizations. Because when we get people from these companies, obviously they would bring their expertise. And then I think the overall uh, bar or level of my uh, EH, organizational EHS would go up. We as an HR, can we bring uh, good KPIs and, and link them in our performance management system or performance appraisal uh, programs where people are rewarded or for bad behaviors may be reprimanded or not encouraged so that it becomes part of a culture. Can we bring uh, EHS department, they, they bring a lot of good quality content on EHS subjects. Can we make the overall training delivery more meaningful, more exciting, okay, more relevant? Uh, because HR, uh, especially the LNOD function, we get exposed to a lot many uh, good techniques of uh, uh, LNOD for, for higher learning or better learning retention. Can we bring those uh, and create more meaningful, more exciting, more employee experience initiatives towards learning and development? My experience tells me that when company starts investing in EHS, especially safety, employees love it. Can we look at EHS, or especially the safety part, as a very powerful employee engagement tool? And my experience tells us, yes, employees do appreciate. I think during my uh, various interactions with newcomers or new hires, uh, especially even at the individual operators, they would say that this company has safety ke upar bahut dhyan hai aur humko bahut achha lagta hai because company tells us that company cares for us. I think it's a beautiful compliment. One step higher, it's also a great employee experience initiative. Because when they get rewarded for good safety behaviors or good initiatives, okay, and when those photographs are flashed everywhere, when they go back and tell their families, ki dekho, mujhe company se ye gift voucher mila ya jo bhi hai. Or I got promoted because my marks performance appraisal, potential appraisal, mein, uh, I did well on safety EHS and I got promoted because of that, or I got better increment, then I think it's a great employee experience. So friends, these are the kind of uh, points of convergence that are there. EHS is absolutely, uh, it, it's an uh, imperative. It's not something that, that is desirable. The idea is how much passionately we feel about it, with what kind of conviction we drive it, and 
though again i am reiterating maybe at the cost of uh, repetition that though there are five important players it is absolutely essential that if there is one player or one part is lagging the other has to take that kind of a courage extra initiative and go extra mile there is this famous poet dushan who has in one of his uh, celebrated poems he has said mere dil mein nahi to tere dil mein hi sahi ho kahin bhi aag lekin aag jalni chahiye thank you so much kya baat hai rajesh bhai thank you for your uh, insightful yet implementable thoughts uh, so very quickly uh, capturing what he said there are five key players uh, top management of the board uh, c suite level cxos uh, operations and supply chain where bulk of the employees work ehs and hr that's a new way of looking at the stakeholders who have a critical role in uh, making this happen uh, the importance of sustainability he shared that beautiful definition which all of us are aware present generation meeting their needs without adversely affecting the ability of future generations to meet their needs the importance of passion and persistence in making things happen wow uh, stick your neck out because it is about survival how to raise the ehs bar by hiring the right talent from outside and leveraging performance management system to bring in the right kras and kpis for critical roles uh well the good news is that uh, we have time for q and a uh, i don't know if uh, the organizers are ready with some q and a uh, are people ready jawab to sare google pe mil jate hain sawal zyada important hai so do we have any questions for uh, either of our speakers and if somebody has please provide them with a the mic uh you know in a relay race normally there is some one person who makes up so in today's program this is the session that's making up for oh my god for the time we lost earlier dekha 4 into 100 relay mein normally it's the last the anchor who does it but this time the second session has managed to do it we still have 16 minutes to go before i hand over to bhavin bhai and uh, the back end so no questions i do I do have a question. Yes. Uh to any of the veteran leaders who come with so much of experience. Uh so my question is why are we looking at uh, curbing the uh, usage at the consumption level? Why can't we do something to take care of it at the production point? I think Rupak sir gave us an example of the aluminum tins. instead of letting it percolate through the supply chain and then eliminating the risk why can't we just mitigate it right there because um, you guys have the influence um, we can actually influence people who have the rights and the responsibilities that i mean i don't know why what Thank what you. inhibits yeah so i am not the expert on the manufacturing process or the packaging technologies but hmm. uh, i know that i represent the pharmaceutical uh, company and most of the career i have been working in the pharmaceutical industry so last i have observed that my packaging development team normally as you know the tablets and capsules they are packed in strips strip packing or the aluminum packing so or the blister packing so these are the different kind of packing now this is definitely it hurts the environment last 15 20 years that awareness is there or maybe there is a demand by the customer also that how do we produce or how do we pack our material in the biodegradable uh, material in fact lot of innovation has happened it is expensive at this stage because finally the cost will be borne by the customer so we have to balance both one is the quality of material what we use in the packaging which is biodegradable at the same time whether customer can afford that cost because we cannot produce something 
which customer cannot buy. It has to be affordable also. But a lot of innovation has happened, uh, at least in the pharmaceutical context, I can say that. And I think a lot of new packaging material or even like we do have certain products which is in the FMCG range, uh, consumer products, over there also which is over the counter products. There also a lot of innovation is happening on this which is an environment friendly packaging material. So which it, which doesn't harm the environment. It, will, it is not that it cannot be, you know, reused once again. So that is happening in the industry. Only thing we have to make it affordable because ultimately the scale matters. If it is a very large scale consumption, then definitely the cost of, uh, you know, unit comes down. Absolutely, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir, uh, another question out here from what you said that it's a very good thing that you've taken the initiatives, the breakthroughs are created. Uh, why can't this be made as a mandate? I'm sure the cost cannot be more than the cost of the survival. Certainly, I think uh, that will, that can only come by the, you know, the government regulators making it mandatory because with, there are so many small scale manufacturers as well. Like our organization is a big organization with 18,000 crore uh, revenues, but there are small players also. So when the government makes any regulations, they have to keep in mind the, you know, overall ecosystem and whether everybody can afford and finally the way the customer can afford. We can make the best of the packaging material, which is uh, very environment friendly, but finally it should be affordable also by, uh, you know, the mass uh, community because the medicines are consumed by the customer, the patients and the patients, all, all, all the patients are not rich enough or they can, they'll pay any price. So definitely it's a very good idea and I think uh, at some point of time, I'm sure I think regulations will come that the packaging material uh, used is, uh, you know, not hurting the environment. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, correct, correct. Still, I think we look at a lot of vendors are still using those kind of uh, packaging material. Yeah, hi, uh, this is Zudan. Uh, the question is to either of the panelists. Uh, uh, what role uh, technology play uh, can play uh, in the process uh, when we talk about uh, sustainability? when we talk about uh, EHS, uh, what role do you think technology can play in the journey towards net zero? Thank you. I think that might actually need a separate day-long conference. Okay. Uh, because uh, in the name of technology, you know, a lot of things that we see now, which we know are harmful for the environment and for sustainability has actually been pushed through in the name of technology. Having said that, uh, I think science and technology does have a very big role in bringing in sustainability, provided we have the will. But I leave it for them to add the final word. So I think that's a, a very relevant question. Technology uh, definitely has played a big role in, in terms of you know, making things uh, safer, uh, even throwing uh, you know right kind of data dashboards and uh, I think uh, integrating technology, various technology applications to drive uh, A, uh, preventive safety, B, uh, making people aware, uh, faster uh, and efficient information uh, flow. I think uh, it's absolutely important. Uh, wherever we are uh, deploying humans, okay, or there is people intensive kind of operations, then uh, we cannot have over-reliance on technology alone. And, and we have seen that organizations, they do miss the uh, sight of larger picture. So in our experience, uh, yes, bringing technology is absolutely essential. Simultaneously, or may I say that uh, uh, rather more importantly, it is important that every, the last man on the ground, okay, he must own safety or he must own EHS KRS as his personal responsibility. Now that's difficult, that's time consuming, 
But if we can get that right, then I think we have sort of become successful or we have achieved something in our EHS journey. So that would be my response. Thank you. One example which uh, comes to my mind uh, related to technology is that in last uh, you know couple of years we have seen the water taps which is on the wash basin. It is now the technology is used that the less water is consumed but the flow is very fast. So you will feel that there is a lot of water and you will feel very good hygienic when washing your hands but actually the consumption of the water is less that's the technology and it comes with the flow from uh, your you know wash basin uh, tap i think this is one example automobiles in fact the kind of the new technology which has come that it will release less emission in the you know space and it will be more environment friendly in fact more and more and I think uh, the government of India is encouraging electric uh, vehicles in coming I think 10 to 15 years time we will find more uh, EV vehicles on India roads uh, than what we have the petrol and diesel vehicles I think uh, but of course today it is costly and uh, infrastructure is yet not ready but I think the intent of the government is there that I think another 15 20 years we will have more EV vehicles on the road which is one more example of a uh, technology. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just add to the this discussion in the industry because I belong to pharmaceutical and we have a concept of QBD quality by design. It itself uh, stops the unsafe practices toward processes and product quality. And another thing we call as PAT, PAT process analytical techniques. Wherever your process is going without specification or uh, above specification, it will automatically stop. So human error is the biggest challenge in the industry, uh, particularly in chemical and pharmaceutical industry. So human is again a big challenge and HR has to play a vital role. Otherwise, we have to look at, at the process automation and other global aspects to improve the business continuity as well as the product safety and people safety EHS also. Thank you. Thank you. I think with that, uh, we'll stop here uh, for uh, sake of time. Uh, Excuse okay. me, sir. This will be the last question. Uh, how do EHS and ESG coexist? And from the expert, I want to know, from their perspective, they will give number one to EHS or ESG, and why? I don't think there is a sequence like that. I think it has to coexist. Yeah, I want to know how they are coexisting. See, uh, environment, and uh, social and governance, these are three aspects of ESG. Environment is all about what we spoke in last, uh, you know, 30, 40 minutes, that how do you protect the environment by usage of the material or alternative source of energy and all that. And it's a statutory requirement for the large organizations now to submit the data and get the scores uh, by the independent agency about your ESG score and Dow Jones and those kind of scores are done by evaluation on your ESG matrices. So it is not either or, but it is both environment, social, and social is more related to people, about your people practices. When they call it social, it is not about social work or it is not about CSR. CSR is part of the social, but it is not only CSR. It is all about your people practices. What are working hours of the people? How much overtime you do? In fact, they ask for even that data. And they consider in that definition, overtime is a forced labor. Like we all know that in India, overtime is a part of any manufacturing uh, process. It is required also to some extent uh, for running the continuous operations. But it in that definition, it is used as a forced labor. There are related to even DEI, the diversity, equality, and uh, inclusion. That is part of social. So it's a very wide definition, and it is still new in India, but it is, I think, coming three to five years, this is going to pick up the momentum, 
and uh, it is good for the organizations that if we comply on the ESG norms, it, we should not see that as a compulsion. I think we should welcome that, that I think it will make the environment and the overall the ecosystem more productive and uh, very respectable at a global level. Hello. I'll just uh, add to what Rishikesh said. There are very interesting uh, frameworks that are available now. Okay, So you have like GRI or Sustainability Compact. In India, we have uh, what I call Business Responsibility and Sustainability Reporting, BRSR. So BRSR is our own uh, uh, reporting standard. So our top uh, 1,000 listed companies, okay, they have to make their reporting okay, in BRSR uh, framework which has all these uh, you know, aspects of environment, uh, good governance, etc. So uh, since you are interested, you have shown interest, I think you may like to go through it. And uh, I was just reflecting that if you look at this logo of SHRP, I think it is coexisting. It is environment, you have E, you have governance, you have uh, people and you have profits. So they can coexist and they, are, they should. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, if we have to sum up this session, I can put it in really very simple words. We have come a long way, but we still have a very long way to go. Robert Frost said that the woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. I also have the pleasant task of uh, thanking both these distinguished speakers, so I'll finish that and then hand over to Bhavin so that there's not too much of back and forth. The nicest thing to do is to express gratitude when it is due. Let me start by conveying very deep sense of gratitude on my own behalf and on behalf of all of you to Rishikesh Rawal and Rajesh Vaidya for not only taking time out of their very busy schedules but also for sharing priceless insights so generously. I would also like to thank the organizers uh, and Bhavin Chah and his back-end team for helping and supporting in smoothly conducting this segment. And last but definitely not the least, I would like to thank each one of you here for your very keen and active participation. Thank you and God bless. Over to you, Bhavin Bhai. So let's give a big hand. Uh, panel discussion, two minutes before finish. Kar diya. Before time, let's give a big hand everyone, 48 minutes. Fantastic, that is the first thing. And uh, time management, Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jambo sir, first of all, and all the dignitaries. Now, I have a minutes of time, right? Because there are many mementos, there are many gifts, <laughs> right? So, let me invite, first of all, Hiren sir, you have to stay here today. Let's give a big hand to one second, Hiren bhai. So, so Hiran sir requesting you to, uh, you know, felicitate Ashok sir, first of all, with the gratitude plant, first of all. And then would like to invite uh, Vikas and Seema also, following on the same zoo, to, to felicitate with the momento. Vikas and Seema. Tali thodi aur bas sakti thi hala ki haa, haa, bhaav bhaav bhaav, great. So Vikas and Seema, please join us on the stage. Yeah, a momento, can we have a momento please on the stage? Yeah, great. Thank you so much. So here is sir, you can felicitate it once again with the Momento and Achieve What You Want book, uh, Vasu Healthcare Gift, Hamper and Ratna Finn, Momento. And Achieve What You Want. Thank you so much, sir, for conducting within a timeline and with a very precise conclusion and summary. Thank you so much, sir.
uh, now Hiran sir would like to request you for felicitating Rajesh Vaidya sir with the gratitude plan and would like to invite <laughs> Chintan Bhai from Tara Sons. Fantastic. Can we, can we have a 